Chris Smith from Model Aviation Magazine at the 2012 Toledo Expo. I'm in the 3D Hobby Shop booth with Ben, and we're going to talk a little bit about these EPP foam planes. 3D Hobby Shop's already known for awesome balsa planes, so we're going to ask Ben to tell us about these EPP offerings. Hey, Ben. Sure. How's it going, Jay? Good. So, yeah. Um, all right, we'll make this fast, right? Because we've got to get it all on the video. All right. So we're always trying to push the envelope. And in order to push the envelope, we have to explore all kinds of different materials. Now, most modelers know what EPP foam is. It's rubbery foam that's stiff enough to form an aerodynamic surface, but it's soft enough to absorb energy in a crash. In short, in shorthand, it means airplanes that don't break when you crash them. So everyone in the industry is always experimenting with how to use new materials. This is a cool way to use EPP, something new for us. The these are full fuselage, airfoiled wing, EPP foam airplanes. This is getting EPP construction closer and closer and closer to balsa performance is what we're after. So we're going to show a couple of airplanes here. We do several of these aircraft now. I'm showing off the 48-inch Extra, which is an airplane we have in the warehouse right now. And then you're holding the prototype of a new airplane, a 40-inch Edge. So I'm going to take the uh, canopy hatches off the airplanes here to show that what we have is a hybrid EPP and plywood structure in the front to hold all the gear, to hold the motor, give you a battery tray area. And then the rest of the airplane is EPP and carbon. There's carbon stiffeners buried in the EPP surfaces, the ailerons, elevators, rudders. And we actually have removable wings on the 48-inch size. These ride on a carbon wing tube. So we have an airplane that's easy to transport like balsa, breaks down the same number of pieces. It's extremely quick to assemble. The fuselage is all is all uh, pre-assembled in the box. The wings are pre-assembled, ready to slide on. And it uses the same equipment as our four-foot balsa airplanes, and in this case, is our 40-inch balsa planes. But when you hit the ground, they tend to bounce. They bounce a whole lot better than balsa. So this is a, is a big thing for us at 3D Hobby Shop. We have you know, several dozen balsa models designed by Scott Stoops and Andrew Jeske, which are extremely high performance. But now we can offer our designers this new construction method so they can put the same airfoils, the same moments, the same aerodynamic components. They're a little bit lighter than balsa, and they're going to last a lot longer. We can't say they're ever going to be quite as precise at speed as a rigid wood airplane. But if somebody says, I'm not quite ready for a wood 3D pattern airplane, I want something a little more durable, we've got the answer now. They can buy the airplane. They're using exactly the same motors, packs, servos, and they can tear this up for a year, and then they're truly ready for the balsa version with all the high-speed performance. It's a pretty cool thing. So we're comfortable flying low with these, even if we're not an Andrew Jeske. We're comfortable flying low, and we're comfortable crashing. We're comfortable throwing them in the back seat of the car, taking risks with them. We have some spare parts available, but you'll probably never need them. We've crashed these hundreds of times in development. About the only thing you can break on the airplane is if you hit it right on the nose, you can crack the firewall. It's really easy to fix. It's just a piece of plywood. So this makes a really practical way to practice down low, especially rolling harriers, low knife edge passes, learning to really fly inverted with confidence, do it on one of these. The colors on these are amazing, and usually if, with EPP you lose that. Tell us a little bit about that. So we've been working with EPP for several years, and we knew that was something we had to, was a problem we had to solve, that we needed to come up with methods we could use in production that got really, really vibrant colors. We're not going to tell you what they are, but we have cracked that particular nut. Now we can put on really complicated paint schemes with lots of straight lines or lots of curves and we can do them in a vibrant way that actually mimics the vibrancy of ultra coat. Well they look fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us about it. Thanks us. very much. Enjoy.